So a lot of you guys would have seen my episodes of Year of Rec so far this year where I have gotten book recommendations from a specific source, a specific place. We've done paid professional, patron picks, subscribers picks and family picks. And for May's episode, this is May's episode, I'm starting it well into May but I think it's probably gonna end up going up at the start of April but I'm reading the books in May. <laughs> I thought for May's episode, maybe we should put to the test whether the best person to give me book recommendations is me. <laughs> for what? I'm you. So today I'm gonna to be reading some of my five star predictions from my most recent five star prediction video. I picked three of them that I think are A, interesting, and B, I've gone for three from authors I haven't read from before. So in that video I did 50% authors I've given five stars before and 50% authors I've never read from before and I've chosen those because I feel like that's less, you know, that's putting it more to the test, my my recommendation instincts to myself. Listen, I, for a while I thought, does this quite fit the vibe of Year of Rex? But I think it does because if this ends up being the most successful episode of Year of Rex then we know I just have to trust myself and ignore everyone else. <laughs> Everyone else says about books. No, I don't know if it will end up being so. I'm very intrigued to see why I end up rating these. So shall we get into the three books that I have recommended myself? Because I think I'm going to love them. <laughs> These are all ones I've spoken about a ton lately, so we'll keep it brief because I'll tell you more about them as we read them. First, we've got Miss Austin Investigates by Jessica Ball, Jane Austen, Mad Mystery. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's camp! It's camp! I don't know what to tell you! <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited. Yeah, this is Jane Austen solving a murder mystery. Is that all we need to say? I love murder mysteries. I love Jane Austen. Miss Jane, I'm giving her five stars left, right, and center at the moment. Oh. <laughs> I just, love her. I just love her. I'm obsessed with her. I want to read loads of Jane Austen nonfiction. I think it's fascinating. I love women. Oh yeah. Mm, I love Janie. So I've been so excited for this one. I am a little bit nervous about it. Is it going to be just a bit gimmicky? You know, I think it really needs the writing to still be amazing, but I think it's going to be so much fun. Also, I've gone with this one because I have a few other Year of Rex lined up. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I said in a recent video how I'm struggling a little bit mentally at the moment and how the books I've been reading have just been too serious. They haven't been what I wanted. And so I just picked a few, well, two of the books in this are fun. One is more serious, but I just wanted to read some stuff that I'm really excited for. And and the other year of Rex episodes are more, more serious books. So this is what I've gone with. <laughs> then the other one I've gone with is a non-fiction and we're gonna be reading Reach for the Stars by Michael Craig. This is a spoken history. So it's all told just through interviews with people who were involved in like UK pop in the late nineties and early noughties. So think Blue, Spice Girls, Girls Aloud, Five. I don't know how many of you aren't from the UK. We'll know some of these. All Saints, Atomic Kitten, like, steps these kind of bands and it's interviewing people both who were in bands who were in the music industry in the time i've been so excited to read this for so long so i can't wait to get into this one and then the final five star that i chose was firekeeper's daughter by anthony booley because this was on tbl cluedo this month as like a surprise entry i think it was was it a rose prompt i can't quite remember but yeah so i did need to get to this anyway so this is the more serious one but i think because it's ya it won't feel as daunting but we're following a young half indigenous girl who i think witnesses a shocking murder and uh, a agrees to be part of like this FBI investigation into drug related deaths within the indigenous community. And it's one I've heard so many good things about and I've wanted to read Angeline Booley for ages. I keep getting distracted by Aurora because she's sleeping there and she looks so beautiful. So those are the three books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. I am just about to head off to a little holiday in the Isle of Wight with Tom's family. I've never been in the Isle of Wight before, I'm so excited. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how much I'm gonna film. I might film a lot, I might not. I'm just putting this now <laughs> as a disclaimer because I am, like I said, I've been having a bit of a rough time mentally and so I really feel like I need to switch off and sometimes if I'm thinking about what I should film for videos, I'm not really present in the moment. So I may film some stuff, I may not, I may just be book check-ins at the Airbnb we're staying in. I think I'm going to start with Miss Austin Investigates. I also, because I'm going away, I just wanted to read books I'm really excited for. So I'm really excited for this video. We're going to see whether I am the best person to give me book recommendations. So I'm going to go ahead and start Miss Austin Investigates, probably on the way to Isle of Wight, and I'll check in with you once we're there.
If you watched my last vlog, you will have seen this room already. We're about to leave. <laughs> I haven't really done much reading while we've been here. We were here for four nights. And um, I finished The Goodbye Cat on the first day. So I suppose I did read a lot of that, like on the first day. And then I haven't really read a lot. And now we're leaving today, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lovely time in the Isle of Wight, as you guys would have seen from some of the clips. I've had the absolutely most amazing time. I haven't read a lot. I've done other stuff. We've gone for a lot of walks, and I've just kind of chilled out, really, and not read a lot. <laughs> However, I am 120 pages into Miss Austin Investigates, so let's chat about this, because I think I'm going to read a lot more in the car on the way home as well. So 120 pages in, basically all that's happened is, is the synopsis. So Jane Austen's at a ball, she's living her best life, a murder happens, and her brother is framed or is 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 the magistrate local magistrate thinks that he is the killer and he is arrested and her brother seems to have some learning difficulties and so her family are trying to figure out how best to defend him and she decides that she's going to figure out who the real murderer is so that her brother gets freed and i'm really enjoying it i'm not gonna lie the first like 30 pages or so i struggled i really struggled to get into it because i think it's a bit jarring when all that you've read really from this time period, this historical setting, is Jane Austen's writing. <laughs> you don't compare when you don't compete. You can't even get highlights in your hair like me, bitch. And then suddenly you're reading something and you're like, um, this ain't Jane's writing. You know what I mean? I was reading it and I was like, it doesn't quite compare to how Janey wrote, but it's not trying to, you know, it's not written in that style. But I just think that's a little bit jarring to start off with. So I did struggle to get into it, but then last night and this morning I've read quite a bit more of it and I'm starting to really enjoy it. It's so fun. It's so fun following Jane Austen something about her history. And also I'm learning a lot about her her past. So it, it seems pretty accurate with her siblings and her parents and her upbringing and talking about, you know, stuff that she experienced as a child. It seems pretty well researched and pretty accurate to her life, which I really enjoy. But yeah, nothing's really happened yet. We've kind of just set it all up, but I think that's a lot of interesting dynamics there's also a man who she thinks she's going to get engaged to that she's seeing and obviously we know Jane Austen never got married and so that's an interesting storyline because you're waiting to see how that's going to play out. I just think it's fun so far. I'm excited to get really into it. I found a Regency playlist. <laughs> I'm like obsessed with like oh my god the the <laughs> The BBC front and page there's um theme song came on. I was like yes. <laughs> I think it's very interesting. It's I love anything in this in this setting, but obviously Janie's our lead, so I'm enjoying it. I don't have a ton of thoughts. I just wanted to pop in because I'm obviously about to leave. <laughs> it wouldn't make much sense continuity wise. I'm probably then gonna read a big chunk in the car. Probably won't finish it, but I reckon I'll read like a couple hundred pages. So yeah, we've only had the synopsis. We've only had the setup. Like even though it's 120 pages, the font size is really big. So it's it's not as much as like another book's 120 pages. So yeah, I think the mystery is set up in an interesting way. We've had some clues. Jane's worked out like what time of the what time the death was, etc. So I'm excited to continue reading it. Don't know if it's gonna be a five star, but so far I just think the gimmick of it is <laughs> meaning that I am enjoying it. So fast, went from so lonely 
Hello gorgeous cuties. I am back home now. Apologies I did not film a ton of the trip. We were just really busy. <laughs> we were just went on a lot of walks and then when we came home I was so tired. Um, and then we just had dinner. It was a lovely trip though. Honestly it was incredible. It was such, it was exactly what I needed mentally. Like I spoke to you guys a little bit about how I'd been struggling with some stuff before and I just feel like it was really what I needed. So we had a wonderful time but now we're back and I'm planning on doing a lot of reading in the next couple days because I do want to get this vlog out this weekend. We shall see how successful I am. I'm now ooh, 270 pages into Miss Austin Investigates. I am really enjoying it. I think it's so much fun. It's Regency setting, reading a murder mystery in that setting. There's a lot of real characters from Jane's life, like her cousin has turned up or like, it's very realistic, I think, to the people. I don't know to what extent, like the wider characters, but it's very realistic to her life. And I just think it's like the gimmick is getting me. It's so fun. However, I will say, Jane just keeps accusing me I, I pray to God you're guilty. You're innocent. I think I've complained about this in ones with, in murder mysteries before. Like she just keeps turning up to people and going, "You're the murderer." <laughs> it does, yeah, all along. And then we quickly find out, no, it's not them. Like it's getting ridiculous. Like at the end, she's gonna have accused everyone apart from who actually is the murderer. So I think that is. I don't like that in my murder mysteries when we're constantly going, oh, it's you, like to people's faces. I think it's a bit excessive. So that's not my favorite. And I will say a couple times, I found myself like having read a page and I do not know what I've just read. Jeremy, you know I mean? my eyes are moving across the page. I'm like consuming the words, but they're not sticking. And I think that's just maybe something about the debutiness of the writing. But on the whole, I still am very much enjoying it. At the moment, it's feeling like a strong four, you know? which that's the best rating I've had in quite some time. <laughs> I've had an absolutely diary month. Like I said, I think my average rating in May is 2.9 or something. I don't want to talk about it. So a four is very, very positive. So I am really enjoying it. I think a lot of it's going to hinge on how it comes together in this final final part but it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun in a little quaint english village with jane austen solving mad mysteries and like her writing a lot of letters to her sister which her sister isn't there but over her life she wrote a lot of letters to her sister and so it's fun seeing that as well it's a lot of fun i'm very much enjoying it i came home to some books that you guys have sent me so one was unwrapped because i think someone in my family opened it accidentally it's from dagger thanks for the loves i get from youtube channel enjoy thank you so much and dagger has gifted me an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green which is impeccable timing because i'm actually going to be reading this i was going to have to get this myself pretty soon because i'm going to be reading it in the next couple months yeah this is one i've meant to read for ages it's probably one of the oldest books on my amazon wishlist <laughs> like it's been on there for years and years and years and years and i know it's about a, a girl who stumbles across this statue and like posts a video about it and it's like a viral sensation. I think it's a lot to do with internet fame, but I've always enjoyed seeing Hank Green talk and I think he's very intelligent. So I'm very excited to read this. Like I said, I'm reading it in a couple of months. So thank you so much. And then we also have a parcel that I have not, that has not been opened because <laughs> they realize, oh shit, it's got Megan's name on the front. Let's see what this is. We've got the note. Let's look at the note first. Oh, it's Phoebe from my Patreon. Okay, Phoebe says, Meg, joining your Patreon was the best decision I've made all year. You've created such a welcoming community and I'm so grateful to be part of it. I love this book and hope you, you do too. Much love from Phoebe. Phoebe, thank you so much. I'm gonna have to go thank you right now. What is it? <gasps> okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> It is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is the author of A Diary of Blood, which I loved. I thought A Diary of Blood was so unique and special and what an interesting book. And I think this one's following Camilla, maybe, because A Diary of Blood is like a Dracula's wife retelling. And I think this is a Camilla retelling at this like school for girls, isolated Massachusetts ancient school for girls. <laughs> Oh my god, this is perfect autumnal book, right? I'm gonna have to save this for the autumn, or like the end of this year, like dark, opulent. Oh, ah! thank you so much, baby. That's so kind of you. I'm gonna have to go thank you. And Dagger, let me know if you have socials or comments so I can thank you personally as well. I am gonna go read as much as I can. I'm very excited to see who the killer is. Hello cuties. I finished Miss Austin Investigates this morning and I enjoyed it. I'm giving it a four star. I have like nothing to say to you. <laughs> I think it's cute. I think it's quaint. I love the setting. It feels like she has an author's note at the end where it talks about 
how some of the characters were real people in Jane Austen's life and some were more inspired by characters who lived around her at the time. But I do think, I mean, it's a four star. I really enjoyed it. But I do think a lot of that is because it's Jane Austen. I'm obsessed. Quality wise, this is probably a 3.5, right? But the gimmick does push it over to a four for me. I do think it's a bit debuty, right? And that's not, a, it's a debut. So it's, it should be a bit debuty, probably. I mean, if a debut isn't debuty, then it's miraculous. So I do think some of the writing, I, it's like Jane Austen just kept like, kept accusing everyone. <laughs> around guys yeah and like I don't think that's very for a book that is pretty rooted in realism for what a woman at her time was able to do I don't think she can just go around accusing everyone like that would have a real negative impact on her social standing <laughs> it's you. so that element of it I think was a little bit weak and at the end I think you as a reader are supposed to know from a certain point who the murderer is but it then takes a long time for that to be revealed in the book, like for it to be confirmed. I think you're supposed to know from a certain point who the murderer is, but it just takes a long time. And so as a reader, you're kind of like, okay, like get on with it. You know what I mean? From a certain point, like there's all these other scenes going in that it doesn't feel like we necessarily needed. So I'm gonna continue on the series. There's more coming out, I don't know, next year maybe, who knows? But um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think it's cute. I like the gimmick. I think it's fun. But I do think I enjoy it because it's like a confluence of my favorite things. I don't think the murder mystery is particularly ingeniously plotted. Although if you were to take me back to the start of the book and tell me some of the things that are revealed, I go, oh my God, that's so, you know, that's so cool. But I think by the end of it, you've become very used to some facts that then it doesn't feel as much of a shock, if that makes sense. So I'm now going to start Reach for the Stars by Michael Craig. I'm on Reading Sprints on my patrons right now. So um, one of them has actually read it and told me that it's a very quick read. But I'm so excited. I'm really, really excited for this. I think this could be the perfect kind of non-fiction for me. I'm very much looking forward to it. So yeah, I'll tell those of you who are not British more about who it talks about, etc. once I check in with you. But yeah, I'm hoping to get through this pretty quickly because I'm very excited. Hello friends, it's much later in the evening, but I am halfway through Reach for the Stars and I'm loving it, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, oh my God, I'm loving it so much. It's everything I wanted it to be. It's so much fun. I just don't know where to start. So, like I told you, this is non-fiction about Brit pop. So it really began with the Spice Girls, is what you're talking about, you know. Take that dies, <laughs> and from its ashes comes Spice Girls. And this is actually, I didn't realise, each chapter is following, is focusing on a particular band. I thought it would maybe focus on themes, but each chapter is focusing on a band, kind of in chronological order. Obviously some overlap, but it's focusing on them in chronological order, and I'm loving it. We've had, what chapters have we had so far? I can tell you. We've had Spice Girls, Five, Steps, then a chapter on Innocent Records, which was like Billy Piper, which if any of you International Doc 2 fans, Rose, Billy Piper, she was a pop star. She's actually like the youngest female to ever ch solo chart or get number one in the UK. I think it was get number one. Anyways, um, it was Billy Piper, Atomic Kitten and Blue, that chapter on, and then we just read the S Club 7 chapter. And I, this is just fascinating. For the Spice Girls, he managed to interview all of them apart from Victoria, which I think is incredible and it's just amazing hearing the story of these bands from the people themselves who are I think this is gonna be five stars <laughs> I'm loving it I'm not kidding that's the best song <laughs> I ever heard <laughs> Oh my god! But not only are we following the people in the bands, we're following the managers, the songwriters, the PR, the interviewers, the journalists who got to know them. And it is just absolutely fascinating. There is something about this era that is so special. Obviously, this is 1996 to 2006, and I was born in 2000. So these are like when I was really young, the, the bands that were around. But um, it's like iconic, isn't it? Like Steps, S Club 7, S Club 7 Reach, S Club 7 Don't Stop Moving. Ah! I'm very excited for the Girls Aloud chapter. We'll get into that, but I'm very excited for the Girls Aloud chapter coming up later on because Girls Aloud are on their reunion tour at the moment. And I'm, even though I've never been a massive Girls Aloud fan, I am loving all the clips in their reunion. I made all the American people on my Patreon reading sprints today go look up Sound of the Underground by Girls Aloud because I'm a fan. 
hell. And I was looking at their Wikipedia. I don't know why I'm talking about Girls Loud when I haven't read their chapter yet. But um, I was going through their single history and every single is a banger. Oh my God. Anyway. Slowly but surely you start to realize, actually, I can't nip to the garage in my pajamas anymore for a pint of milk, even if I want to. Anyways, so yeah, it's just absolutely fascinating. I will say the chapters, it is a little bit repetitive in the sense that these bands typically have the same arc to them. Like they all have three albums and then they're donezo. <laughs> they all have the same like, you know, tensions. They all have the same kind of relationships with managers and stuff. So it is a little bit repetitive, but I'm honestly not minding it. I think if you are from the UK, I get that this is niche, but if you're from the UK, especially if you grew up more at this time, like if you're born like five to 10 years before me, this is really gonna be in your peak. And it is just fascinating hearing from the people themselves, some of the stories behind the industry and what they experienced. And I, oh, I think it's amazing. I, they spoke a lot about S Club 7's show, which I never realized they did a show and a movie, but I did watch, watch um, cause like I said, I was young. I watched S Club Junior's show, S Club Junior. <laughs> it's very niche. For those of you who are not UK, you have no idea what I'm going on about. But there was a band S Club 7 who were like adults and then S Club Juniors were made and they were like tweens. And they had a show on CBBC called I Dream, which to this day was one of my favorite shows as a kid. Like it was only on at very niche times. It was, it was like if you were off school and I always remember the, the the still the theme song was like dreaming yeah 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 all around the world now all around the world now so it's taking me back but yeah it's absolutely fascinating and as we get into the second half it's gonna be my, more my era like I my grew up listening to steps and stuff because like my mum loved um tragedy <laughs> by steps i grew up like, listening to the blue oh blue i love blue it was, to this day all rise by blue if you're from the costa rica trip you know i said that was one of my desert fire desert island song <laughs> which i stand by all rise by blue absolutely iconic absolutely iconic i'm honest honestly you guys i feel like i have the best taste in music like i think it's very hard to beat me in taste in music like but yeah as we get into the second half it's more my era like sugar babes girls loud busted they have a bit on busted and mcfly if you don't know, Busted with my life. As a three-year-old, my nan convinced me I was dating James from Busted. <laughs> so anyways, I am absolutely loving it. I'm gonna read a little bit more tonight, but I'm, oh my God, I'm looking at the Girls Aloud chapter. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's so exciting. I think this is absolutely amazing. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning when I've finished it. So I have finished Reach for the Stars and I have reached for the stars and I'm giving it five stars. Oh guys, I loved it. I love this book so much. The chapters that we had in the second half were, let me tell you. Oh, there was one on the UK garage scene. Then there was one on, Z I don't know how to pronounce it, Xenomania. It's like the, the songwriting house behind a lot of Girls Aloud stuff and also Britney Spears' stuff. Then we had the Sugar Babes. Oh my God. The Sugar Babes was such a fascinating chapter because if you don't know, they were this band that went through a lot of like personnel iterations. Obviously Keisha and Mucha were the most iconic. <laughs> but I forgot how many bangers Sugar Babes had freak like me round round push the button about me about about you now about you now about you now <laughs> I was like is it about me now or about you now they had so many good songs like they are such good oh we were blessed with such good pop I like modern pop but I much prefer this era of pop like it's just so good why isn't there pop like this anymore oh, I love it I think we should have that conversation then there was one on Boyzone and Busted. Then there was one on Pop Stars and Pop Idol, the TV show. Then there was Girls Aloud. And then there was a chapter on X Factor, which was very interesting because X Factor was definitely much my generation. I grew up watching that. Me and my mum were actually talking about how interesting it is that those kind of nasty shows don't exist anymore. Like X Factor and this kind of pop is all in this prism of like nastiness on TV that you don't thankfully really have anymore. And it's just crazy that we as like a society watched that like how nasty x factor was and like mean and laughing at people like i don't like it it's interesting it doesn't really exist anymore what's more popular on tv now is like happiness like strictly is the only kind of you know show talent show that's similar to those that's lasted because it's nice you know what i mean but anyways this was absolutely fascinating i loved it i love the bits on busted because i fucking love busted girls loud was very interesting because it was very interesting how that that 
songwriting house that they're very much tied with worked and hearing about that. So like I said before, I cannot recommend this enough. If you are born around a similar time, a little bit before me, and this is kind of your era, it's so underrated. It's only got like 800 ratings on Goodreads or something like that. And I just think it's wonderful. I actually looked it up and the guy is writing, um, his next book is about Kylie Minogue, which I'm, I feel like Kylie Minogue's not quite my generation, so I probably won't read it. Cause I feel like why this is so amazing was because of how relevant it is like culturally to me. So if like you're from the US, you have no idea who these people are, do not read this. <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna keep an eye out for anything else he writes in the future because I thought it was fascinating. I mean, obviously this isn't all history. So it's all just told through interviews with a little, little bits here and there that he's written. But that in itself is a talent, like piecing together these stories with what different people are saying in different interviews, creating that narrative for us through limitations of what other people have said. So yeah, I absolutely loved it. I cannot recommend it enough. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I just, it's so, it was like heavy nostalgia. The obsession that I got with it was was borderline unhealthy. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how I'm gonna integrate in society after this. <laughs> and I just fucking love pop. It was such a great reading experience because I was like looking up all the songs, a lot of the songs as they came up. This is so good. Anyways, I also, before we start uh, Firekeeper's Daughter, I'm actually just downloading the audiobook on Everend. Um, also script as as we remember it. I got another parcel from my Amazon wishlist. Guys, I feel so spoiled and overwhelmed with how many parcels I've received in the past couple weeks. Just, I want to say thank you so much. I don't want to seem like I'm like opening one every, <laughs> all the time, but um, I'm so thankful for you guys sending this to me. So let's see what it is, shall we? Oh my God, it's Connor! <laughs> Connor's another one from my Discord. I love Connor so much. I will defend this series of my life. What is it gonna be? Okay, wait, I'm not looking at what it is yet. Also, thanks for bringing me joy every time you upload it, introducing me to the insane but amazing people in the Discord. Okay, what series will Connor defend with his life? Oh, okay. Okay, okay, yay! Okay, it's the next in the Finley Donovan series. So I recently read the second one and didn't love it as much as I loved the first one, but I have good th feelings about continuing the series. I'm excited to continue on, cont I can't speak. <laughs> I'm getting too excited. I'm very excited to continue on with the series. Also, this one feels very short, but it's just because the font is tiny. But thank you so much, Connor. Oh my God, I'm so, this is so exciting. Yay. This is a series I definitely could make some more progress in this year. So thank you for getting this to me and helping me out. <gasps> How exciting. Okay, I am gonna go start Firekeeper's Daughter. Yeah, this isn't the more serious book out of the three that we've got, but my recommendations are doing pretty well for us so far, I've already seen it myself. <laughs> so yeah, I'll check in with you probably when I'm about halfway. Good morning, friends. I have just woken up, but I am halfway through Firekeeper's Daughter and I'm enjoying it. At the moment, we'll get into it, but it's feeling like a 3.5 or a four. But I also feel like the ending could drastically change that. So basically all you need to know is the synopsis is we're following a young girl who is half indigenous, half not. So she's always kind of felt like very connected to everyone in her town in a way that other people aren't because they're kind of in either one of the communities, but also like she doesn't really belong anywhere. And a shocking murder happens and she agrees to be part of a covert investigation into drug related deaths in the area. And that does take a little while to materialize. I'd say it's not until about 80 pages in and the font is like tiny in this. <laughs> it's not until about 80 pages in that that really materializes. But there's something about this writing, especially for a debut, that is so accomplished. It reminded me of when I used to read a lot more hard hitting YA that was amazing. Like Courtney Summers, I still read Courtney Summers, but like I used to read a lot in this vein. And then I've, over time I've just started reading less YA, but there's something about this that like felt very nostalgic to me in, in kind of how it felt reading it. Yeah, I'd say it's very slow. That's the only issue with it. And I'm getting the sense that it's all gonna come together in the second half and there's gonna be a lot of twists and deceptions and reveals. But I would say right now it's a little bit slow and there's just a few elements of the voice that are irritating me a little bit. Like she keeps calling her involvement in this <laughs> FBI operation, like her secret squirrel project, but she like, she like keeps going to be a secret squirrel, I must do. Squeak, secret squirrel, task one. It's just the repetitiveness. I've had enough of the word <laughs> secret squirrel. I've had it. Enough. You know what they but you know, it's very well written, like I said, and the look into indigenous culture, particularly for indigenous women and what they face and 
also the way that, you know, drugs are affecting this community, I'd say it's all very, very, very interesting and a very important voice to hear from. So yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I don't know if I'm enjoying it quite as much as I thought I would. Do you know what I mean? It's like almost there, but I don't know if I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm enjoying this so, so, so much. You know, I just turned to a page and there's like four secret squirrel <laughs> incantations. I feel like because it's very slow, we've only really just set everything up in order for it to all come crashing down. But the relationship she has with both sides of her family is very beautiful despite you know, parts of her family making mistakes, like her white grandmother, grandparents not allowing her dad to be on her birth certificate and how that's affected her, but she still has care and affection for her grandmother. I don't know, she's a very interesting main character with a lot of layers, I feel like. So I'm enjoying it. I don't think it's gonna be a five star, but yeah, I am, I'm enjoying it. The writing is very special, particularly for a debut. So it does still make me very excited to read more of Angeline Booley's stuff in the future because I have been eyeing up Warrior Girl on Earth. So we'll see how this finished. I think the magic of this book is gonna be how it comes together in the second half. Okie dokie, I have finished Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley and this one was a little bit tricky for me in terms of rating. I've been going back and forth between a 3.5 and a 4 and I think in quality, I was thinking about this, right? <laughs> This is a better book than this, objectively. Craftsmanship, what it's saying, what it's doing, how important it is. This is better than this. I enjoyed this a little bit more than this. Kind of similar, but I enjoyed this a little bit more than this. So I'm thinking, well, I enjoyed it a bit less than what I gave a four, but it is objectively a much better book than what I gave a four. I'm, I'm confused because but I think I am gonna land on a four. I think this is an incredibly important book highlighting what Native American women experience. It tackles a lot of difficult topics, like I said, drug issues within Native communities, but also sexual assault towards women in those communities, particularly also by non-Indigenous individuals. And I just think it's incredibly important. And I read the author's note at the end, and I thought what Angie Booty said is very true, where this is, of course, tackling very difficult, horrible topics, and it has a lot of dark darkness to it, but there's also a lot of love and community and joy in this book. And I thought that that was balanced really, really well. I just don't know if I fully connected to it, but you know, I'm starting to think if I don't love this YA, am I ever gonna love a YA ever again? <laughs> am I just done reading YA? Which is like such a identity shift for me. I don't even, I've got loads of YA on my TBR, but I think we're almost phasing it out completely at this point. Cause I just think perhaps I didn't feel like I wanted the romance. I felt like the romance kept getting in the way of it. There's romance in this. And yes, I think it's important to show, you know, Native American women in, particularly when there's ve very rarely any books written about them, but also show them in loving, caring, mutually caring relationships. So I think there's an importance to it, but I just think the more thrillery, mystery side of it was a lot more compelling than the romance. I just wasn't, I just was like, okay. <laughs> I wasn't interested in it. And I felt like it took away from some of the other elements of it. But, you know, I would still recommend this. I just don't think it was as impactful to me as I was anticipating it to being. However, I also say, I don't know if the audiobook worked for me and thus the rating could have been different if I had read it just physically. I think that's also possible. So, at the end of reading these three books, you've got a four, four and a five, which means my average rating for Year of Rex is 4.33, aka the best result. <laughs> you know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. Guys, I don't know how this happened. So yeah, I'm the winner so far. This is not how this should go. Like, of course, actually it is because I know my reading taste, but I, I want every other round to do better than me because that's exciting. That's what the point of doing this series is. <laughs> but apparently I know my reading taste fairly well. I mean, these were five star predictions and two of them weren't five stars. So you could also see that as, as a fail on my part because they're not just books, oh, I think I'll enjoy it. They were five star predictions and two of them were not. So let's put a little asterisk in it. But um, yeah, my average rating is a 4.33. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna end up the winner. I have faith that by the end of the series, we're gonna have at least one more episode that beats me, if not a few more. We've got a few coming up where I think there's a high chance that um, they will beat me in terms of average rating. It's just funny, isn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> that I am the highest average rating so far. So anyways, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Let me know what you thought of any of these books. These are all books I would recommend for different reasons. If I keep sorting Miss Doss Investigates are much more widely recommendable than Reach for the Stars is, because like that's only recommendable if you grew up in the UK at a specific time or into specific things. But yeah, I enjoyed reading all of these and I'm glad that I've read them because two of them have been on my TBR for a very long time. So I'm glad I finally got around to them. But let me know what you thought of any of these books. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!